Let's get salty! Everyone, Zeddy here again today with a brand new video, and we are just hours, maybe a day away. We don't know exactly when. We will be finding about the newest buffs coming to Hearthstone. And I thought it'd be a lot of fun to go back and look at the history of buffs in Hearthstone and what cards have kind of broken the game when they've been buffed or have just been really solid cards. Before we get into that though, we are only like 20 or so subs away from 57,000 subscribers. If you feel like I've earned your subscription, please hit that button. When we hit that new milestone, there might just be another giveaway coming. So why am I on this patch notes? June 3rd, Rise of the Mech. Well, this is the first time in Hearthstone's history we saw a mass buffing and this took all the way until 2019. Hearthstone rarely ever buffed bad cards. They just made new ones or nerfed cards. And well, we saw a new approach and we saw a ton of cards buffed. Some were okay and some, well, they outright broke the game. So let's go through and take a look at the Hearthstone buffs that broke Hearthstone forever. Or, or you know, we're just kind of good. And here we have Nizoth. And by the way, we're not going to go with cards that were reverted, strictly buffed from their original version. And Nizoth, used to cost 10 mana like every other old god in the game but just didn't see that much play the devs went against historical flavor buffed this off and it became a staple in particular demon hunter where all of a sudden you could play this in hero power at the same time in attack with your 8-8 king rush card doesn't see a ton of play these days in wild but in standard it was definitely a meta player once it was buffed until it rotated out of standard to wild next we have fiendish circle this card was four mana for a very very long Long time it was put in the core set and then buffed to three mana where it summons four one one imps and has a fell tag and to be fair it saw basically no play after it got buffed until this most recent expansion where you all of a sudden have the imp location and you have impending catastrophe and fiendish circle is like auto include in every single imp warlock deck because the synergies are so incredible that you get four imps for just three mana allows for such crazy burst and card draw nobody really saw this coming until well recently when this guy tweeted this out before the expansion dropped really smart to see that this would work um, I think most people saw it coming but regardless uh Fiendish Circle has definitely changed the game in a big way Serpent Wig another card that was recently buffed you'll note a lot of these cards are recent because the buffs have been a lot more common lately and I gotta say it's a good thing it really spices things up uh, we have Serpent Wig it used to give minions just plus one plus one didn't see much play now it's plus one plus two and it's been one of the highest win rate decks in standard in the last two expansions not a super popular deck but a very powerful one in this card alone when in the mulligan has something close to a 70 percent mulligan win rate that's how impactful just plus one health can be and it's pretty outright broken to be honest in standard at the moment it's just people just don't like playing it is it because it's priest another recent example is zlag of the abyss the demon hunter colossal the stock used to do only one damage was buffed to two and all of a sudden became auto included in like every demon hunter deck it was so good it got a card nerf that basically never saw play beforehand in Caria, and that is now seven mana making Zlag a little bit worse rather than just reverting the buff and I think it was the right call for the most part as Zlag still sees play although Demon Hunter look at that win rate we need those buffs like now uh is pretty darn awful and this buff hasn't carried it enough but it was pretty broken at the time where Demon Hunter and Warrior were like the only classes that could win the game and now they're the only classes that can't win the game how things change Harpoon Gun another recent example we'll have have some more older ones later we're saving the oldest for last this card originally would dredge and reduce the beast bites cost by two it was buffed to three and ironically this was the best card in the deck already similar to what we might see with edwin coming up but yes this card got buffed to three and it's just ridiculous it's sees play in wild where you just run like two beasts that cost five or more but just getting any of that mana cheats incredible again it's like big beast hunter all these really good decks in standard wild really powerful card and is kind of yeah just a disgustingly broken getting a hydrolodon out on turn four is just not really fair and and i don't know if that really should be a thing but it is and a harpoon gun buff is what enables that blood sail deckhand originally was a one mana two one and well it's still a one mana two one but it was buffed for a while to a two two because warrior was struggling and then they made defy cannoneer and mr smite and people lost 
their minds because, well, Pyro Aurier became disgustingly good and they reverted this buff that never should have happened because a one mana 2 2 probably should have upside. That would break the game. Oh, there's a mage card that has that and it doesn't really break the game, but still, this was pretty gross and yes, was an absolutely broken buff that eventually reverted and hopefully we don't have to see that again. Gray Sage Parrot, another card that was buffed and by a lot. This was an eight mana 6-6 six, six minion, saw almost no play and lost two mana. Awesome stats, but who really cares? And this card not only enabled Big Spell Mage, which is still a top tier deck in standard, but breaks the wild format, the way it works with Time Warp and the Mage Quest to the point where, can this cost six or more or something, please, Blizzard? But yes, this card is one of the more impactful buffs we've seen and Mage really has benefited from a lot of buffs as we'll see. And Grace Age Parrot, definitely one of the most iconic cards at the moment. Magister Dawngrasp, the hero card for Mage, actually came out with eight mana and the hero power only dealt one damage at its base and was basically terrible. Saw almost no play, negative win rate, and well, they changed that. They buffed it to seven mana, they upped the starting damage on the hero power, they also buffed Wildfire to go with it, so you can mention Wildfire, which went two to one mana. They reworded uh, Wildfire that would carry over and not be overwritten by Dawngrasp, and all of a sudden this eight mana terrible hero card has gone to seven mana and outright just wins games on its own, powering like Skeleton Mage, Big Spell Mage. You don't even really need to run buffing stuff for the hero power. The card is that good just on its own. This also went with Mordrush, which went from a 10 mana minion to an eight mana minion, kept the same damage output. And yes, these cards were buffed and they have been incredibly good. And I do actually hear people complain, like could, could we revert some of them? But personally, I still I still dig them, even if they kind of seem a little bit unfair at times. But I mean, we're playing Hearthstone, stuff's broken, but at least it costs eight and seven mana, right? That, that's something. One of the more iconic buffs from just a couple years back, Aldor Attendant. This used to be a two mana two three, was buffed to one mana one three as Libram Paladin basically just sucked. And this allowed you just to curve out earlier and it even went with Libram of Justice, which went from six mana to five mana, which is pretty egregious because this card is like zero mana so quickly. And ironically, that wasn't even enough to elevate Libram Paladin to be a really good deck until Skullamance occurred when you had Broomstick and Penflinger introduced to the game. And all of a sudden Libram Paladin became this meta tyrant in standard its entire run from Skullamance on to the point where people were just begging for the Libra package to go away or for something to get maybe reverted or nerfed again. But no, Libra of Justice, Aldor Tenant, both buffed and were both absolutely incredible. And I will leave off with the most iconic buffed card of them all, Luna's Pocket Galaxy. The mage spell that saw like zero play at seven mana was just not even considered to be playable, was buffed not to six, but five mana outright broke the game. It was just unbelievable playing this on five, the things you could cheat out. We had Conjurer's Calling was added to the game. We ended up getting like Calogos and all these big things in the expansion afterwards in Saviors of Old Doom. And this card was beyond ridiculous, broken in standard wild. They eventually nerfed it and didn't put it to six, put it straight back to seven. But ironically, it was still good enough to see play at seven and still does in fringe lists in Mage to this very day. And it always makes you wonder, was this card originally good at seven and we just didn't realize it and needed that nudge to five to realize just how broken this was i guess we'll never know but let me know in the comments below what are some buffs that i missed out on that you think were absolutely pivotal of the game and i guess we'll find out pretty soon what buffs might be added to this list if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe have a great day and stay salty my friends